Rhodes found this place, which was a foreclosure. And the, like the windows were busted out and the pipes were stolen. And that really intimidated me, but it didn't intimidate you. So <laughs> there is, we went for there it. Is one yeah. that's goodness. already open. Even when we moved here, we had no idea that we would have farm animals. We, we thought we would have like a field with maybe like two animals in it. Yeah, but never nothing like this. We got the two alpacas and llama. They all three of them came together. And we were like, yeah, this is right. This seems good. And then, and then what? <laughs> and we got the bug. And we heard about an alpaca that was in danger. And we went and got her in the middle of the night. Um, and she was close by, uh, within a mile. And she was left in a field, uh, paralyzed from that parasite meningeal worm. But if you know your animals really well and you notice like a slight variation of how they're behaving or how they're moving, you can catch something soon enough. With Mama, she was left in a field with this parasite and it was just like too far. Uh, she was too far gone. She was paralyzed from her neck down. That's when I realized that having a rescue isn't always about saving animals. Like it can be end of life care. Oh, you got it. You got it. I read recently this awesome quote about by uh, Glennon Doyle. In life, you're going to find these things that you, you can't stand. They break your heart and you can't stand them. But that's where you have to stand. Stand there and do something about it. I was actually born into... Uh, a meat-eating household, and my brother is seven years older than me, and he was always, he is still, just one of the most inquisitive people. He was asking where, like, where, I, I think it was maybe chicken, uh, where the chicken came from. And so my mom and my brother became members of the Lehigh Valley Animal Rights Coalition, and my dad and I started going, just as like a family thing, and my mom and my brother went to a Fur Free Friday march in New York City and there was like an organized bus trip and they I think they packed bologna and cheese sandwiches and they were the only people on the bus that had meat and so they were immediately embarrassed that like still even after a few animal rights meetings like they weren't making that connection still um and so they like took their bologna out and put it in the bag and they like ate cheese sandwiches and from that point on my parents uh never bought meat yeah, my mom recently said that she was like, finally like living her dream, but I did all the work. It's like, all right, Crushing take it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, so I don't always love living that close to where I grew up, but my parents also volunteer a lot. That's very helpful. We acquired two chickens from Tractor Supply during their chick days, and they were a week old. I got the woman to surrender Marna to me because she had this big growth on her neck. So I brought her home. This was during the school year and I realized very quickly that um, Marna needed someone with her during the day. Her, her leg is twisted and she can't walk on it. And we went, I think we went away for a weekend and I was like, can Marna stay at your house? Like we have people staying here, but I just want Marna to be with someone all the time who knows her. And I've never gotten her back because my mom has fallen completely in love with her. So I have to be careful who my mom watches and takes care of. You didn't know you were getting a chicken. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> this has been going on your whole life, right? Where yeah. mom has brought home animals? Rabbits, yeah. Cats in her pockets? Oh my Kitty god. pigs, gerbils. Birds. Chucky brought home the dog. Yeah. All, all strays. And then you'll talk to my husband and see that I do the exact same thing yeah. to him that my mom has done to you. Yeah. Well, there was one, there was like one rule after I went on a business trip oh. uh, to China and I came home and we had two more cats. And I was like, look, indoor animals we at least have to talk about because that changes everything with more indoor animals. Outdoor animals, I'll be patient. 
I grew up in Pennsylvania on a 24-acre farm with my parents. My parents were always vegetarian, so we were raised, my sister and I were raised as vegetarians, um, and primarily around um, just the idea of living simply. Uh, my parents practice Buddhism, and so they don't feel like it's right to kill animals for meals. Um, so we were sort of raised with that. Uh, my sister in high school learned about veganism and um, went a little radical in her, her rebellious years of being a teenager. She went vegan and tried to convince us all to go vegan. Um, I saw how hard that was on my parents, uh, having a teenager, and at the time it was really hard to find dairy alternatives and meat alternatives um, in the you know 90s. Um, and so I just decided to stay as a vegetarian until I was on my own. So once I got to college, um, I became a vegan as well and started to learn more about environmental implications of meat, um, which I hadn't really heard much about. Um, in college, studied environmental studies and that became more of my focus, even more so than the animal cruelty aspect. Trying to, you know, teach Juniper about that aspect of it too. So Ray, um, Ray's focus is really on the animal welfare aspect, and I still care about that a lot too. Um, but I'm trying to sort of round that picture out and say, well, you know, there are other reasons too. We're raising her vegan, um, but we want to do it in a way that my husband was raised, um, which is here we make vegan food. Um, and here we talk about where our food comes from. Um, and when you're out with friends, you know, you are an individual and you can pick the things that you do. Um, and you're, you know, you're the boss of your body. You want to come help me mix a piggy food? Okay. Okay. I'm going to start down here. You're in control of what you want to eat and, you know, your place in this world. But here, this is what we're doing and we're just going to educate. Yeah. Um, Junie, no, no. are you a vegetarian or a vegan? Vegan. What is a vegan? Eat no animals. During the school year, I'm a full-time art teacher, teaching uh, three-year-old pre-K students through eighth grade. Um, and I work at two different schools, an elementary school and a middle school. Midge gets VIP dining up on the window still. Whoop. I'm really new at this, so I didn't quite have it all figured out and ready to go for the beginning of school and me working full time, but also having a rescue farm. Um, so I ended up having some people over to train them um, and then have them sort of claim a day Monday through Friday to come and be with the animals and do a couple farm chores and just keep everything rolling smoothly. It's a bit of a workout too though. And it's a really big help. There's like certain things that I don't even have to do anymore, such as like scooping poop down in the field. It's just something that they do and um, it doesn't need to happen every day. Um, and they're always putting in fresh water and scooping the the stalls if they have like big wet spots and they're sweeping the cement part of the stalls. Uh, it's just really nice to always have someone here too, just for peace of mind when I'm not home. And then my folks also help out a lot. And then we have volunteer days, uh, which are usually organized by the Animal Defenders of the Greater Lehigh Valley. And the great thing is like a lot, like some of the people are not vegan, some people are vegan, everywhere. some people leave vegans. And um, I, you know, I meet a lot of like-minded people, which is very comforting, um, especially out here, you know, there's like a big hunting scene and um, sometimes I don't feel like I know very many like-minded people. My husband and I went vegan, uh, December of 2019. Um, but when we got here, we were newly vegans, um, didn't really know what we were doing other than eating salads and beans and stuff. But yeah, after talking to, uh, Rachel and Rhodes, it kind of like broadened our horizons and kind of solidified the moral reasons of why we're vegan and why we do what we do and this work helps you know it, i feel like it's more meaningful so that kind of brings people in from you know 10 to three hours away sometimes you have people from delaware or philly or maryland who come up and it's just it's a nice way to meet everyone and you know we're small enough that we can make everyone lunch What is 
your ideal world? There's such a big picture, like the amount of climate change that comes from animal agriculture is horrific. Um, but people don't want to know. They, they just, you know, like their food and like their lives the way it is. And, um, you might feel like the heart's breaking. <laughs> is it okay if I don't answer that right now? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one though. It's a good question. I think my ideal world is one where all of us are able to see things for what they are and be willing to look at it with bright eyes, almost like from the eyes of a child. For Ray and I, um, it seems obvious that veganism, once you see the cruelty right, of animals or hear about the environmental impact, that you just give it up because we've, we've already made that choice. But we all have choices that we've sort of been avoiding, even though we know the right thing to do. And so I, that's my, would be my wish is like, how do we get to this state that we all had, right? So Juniper is seeing it. When you ask her why she doesn't eat meat, she says, because she's a human. And it just seems so obvious to her. Thank you.